Hi, welcome to coopgaming.info podcast. What episode is this? I believe it's episode eight. Okay, and I I vowed to start this time (laughs) by saying what you're supposed to say on YouTube, which is, Hey, what's up, boys and girls? (laughs) (laughs) This is this is your host, John. I'm Genevieve. Get ready for an exciting show today. No, I don't really think it'll be that exciting. (laughs) No, not too exciting, but uh, we have some stuff to talk about, I guess. Yeah, so we tried to get Bird in the frame as usual. He just flew away. Maybe if you're watching on YouTube, you saw him fly in the background, and maybe the mic picked up some flapping if you're (laughs) listening to the podcast. But uh, so updates, if you're watching this, you'll see the scene has changed. We're in our basement now. Which yep. is a better setup, but worse lighting. You probably look worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Notwithstanding any amount worse, we look just naturally as yeah, people. And from the months of quarantine here, we're in Illinois, so we're still under lockdown. Oh, yeah. So it's May 3rd, 2020, which means quarantine has been going on now for about two months. Is that right? It, it yep, began yep. in early March, March right? Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. March. Yeah, but I remember hearing about COVID in in December. No, way or back or when. Yeah, uh, we were yeah. kind of following everything happening in China, even though uh, the people in this country weren't too concerned about it when the government was locking Chinese people in their houses. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so our biggest COVID update here. We got some gaming computers, some Windows computers. Oh, right, yeah. So <laughs> why is this a COVID update? Just because... If you're on Twitter, on the internet, anywhere, you've heard Bill Gates. You <laughs> might be sa- you might be scared. Bill Gates is gonna break into your house and hit you with a untested vaccine, <laughs> all kinds of other crazy stuff. And uh, we anyway, we realized we gave money to Bill Gates during right, this period. Right. Two two Windows 10 Pro licenses. Yeah. So however much Bill Gates get out of that, we we kind of we gave it to him. Directly fund him. So, uh, I don't know, I guess that's... Yeah, yeah, so... As far as co-op <laughs> g- co-opgaming.info goes, that's our statement on COVID, I guess. Is yeah, that we, yeah, we, we gave money to Bill Gates <laughs> in the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, although I didn't quite think about it when we were doing I it. I didn't think about it either. Yeah, we, yeah. we considered getting a used gaming one, or a used gaming computer, but uh, it, it seemed like a better value to get a discounted pre-made one, which is... What we did. Uh, so far, it's been going good. No stability issues. We've tried a couple games, but haven't really gotten into it yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what I wanted to say, first of all, the site is probably no longer going to be console exclusive, which is good. I mean, anyone who kind of gets into video games eventually kind of gets into computers and wants to play games on the computer. And right, right. And, you know, most PS4 games are usually computer first, right? Like there aren't that many PS4 games we play that actually are PS4 exclusives. There, you know, yep, Borderlands. Absolutely. We're we're gonna be talking about Borderlands Three today. Oh yeah, we should have said that off the bat. Right, which we picked up recently, for or picked up again. We tried it back in like October or September, whenever it came out. Only played it for like. 30 hours or something, and then put it down. But recently we picked it back up. Yeah, so if you're sick of hearing about Borderlands 3, you've heard it and seen it all before. You've already beat the game a bunch of times. Turn off now. (laughs) There won't be anything interesting about uh, it. There's a little bit interesting, which is that Mayhem 2.0 was released a few Uh days or a week ago maybe, and... I guess we'll maybe talk about that. I haven't looked at the notes, but maybe we'll talk about Mayhem 2.0, which uh, I thought that was kind of a cool update to the game. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So real fast before we start talking about that, let's finish with these updates here. Might end up reviewing some games on PC. Okay, so I want to say the first game we tried when we got these new computers, Path of Exile, boom, it's free. We downloaded it. <laughs> and it was a real slap in the face to realize how profoundly trashy that game actually was on console. Oh my god. Right. It, it is so much better yeah, on computer. Yeah. It, you can tell it's the same game with the content and stuff, uh-huh. but, but just everything on computer is so... I mean, first of all, it's running at at like a reasonable frames per second, uh-huh. right? But also, just like what you can see on the screen... Uh, 
just I, everything, everything about, it, everything right? about yeah. it. Even I remember the process of removing a skill gem on console to put it in a new piece of gear was like so annoying. It was like a long, involved process. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you know, with a mouse, it's you it's right like click, click around, click yeah, click around, and and that's the biggest thing is the interface on PS4 is just like it's terrible compared to the computer it's one, yeah. and and there's no chat on PS4, which is a huge loss, and. You know, we were console Path of Exile players, so we just assumed there was no PvP in the game. Oh yeah, but there's and plenty of right, stuff of like course. That. Yeah, and there's like yeah. public dueling rooms and stuff. Just like the game is just right off the bat, it's so much bigger on computer. Yeah, yeah, and I I just wanted to comment that uh, since we we played one league of Path of Exile on console, then John kept saying, "Oh, let's try the new league." And I kept saying I didn't want to just because that when we did play, we had such terrible, uh, like, we we couldn't play because we would blue screen, so we couldn't get in each other's memory nexus, and just the performance of it was so awful. And I would always see these pictures on Reddit of people playing on computer and think, like, oh, my God, I'm not going to just play that on PlayStation again, ever. And that was just, yep. like, absolutely <laughs> confirmed. I know people are excited about New Path of Exile. Path of Exile 2 yeah, coming yeah, out, coming so out. yeah, we'll probably be excited to try that one. And we never did put up a review of Path of Exile PS4, mm -hmm. but maybe it'd be a good idea to kind of play the computer one a little more and yeah, uh, yeah, kind of uh, see like what all the differences are. Maybe pick up the PS4 one again a little bit. And we have some screenshots that just uh, tell the complete story of how awful and trashy <laughs> that game actually was to play on console, although our internet isn't the best either. But, uh, yeah, so maybe we'll get something about that on the site. Wait, there was one more thing I wanted to say here. Maybe that was it. Oh, wha so we stopped playing Star Wars. I meant to update the article on the website. Main reason being just once we had kind of learned most of the classes in the mass PvP modes, we started trying to learn the lightsaber guys. And uh, you just, we we got too grumpy queuing into the 4v4 Heroes vs. Legends, like, period. Right, right. And it's just because of the format, that, that stupid 4v4 format, the games are so boom and bust where, you know, you're destroying the other team and it's like a joke of a game. Then you queue into a pre-made and fight a pre-made a couple times. You're, you have... It's just like one out of five games are kind of fun, competitive games. Yeah, and yeah. And my rate of improvement was not, I was not improving quickly enough. <laughs> but like with John being pretty good, that the two of us could kind of ensure victory for our pickup group. Right, it was happening right. too slow. I was going <laughs> to say, I really doubt you're close enough to that mic there. You're like oh, eight, eight, okay. eight inches well, away there. But okay. anyway, I was improving too slow. Then eventually there came a point where instead of being excited about turning the game on, we were it was just kind of dreadful. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, you don't want to play every night a super competitive PvP game, but playing the, uh, the lightsaber guys in Heroes vs. Villains, that's like the only format you've got. That's all you can really do. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, I don't know, it's kind well, of irritating. <laughs> yeah, and then when we would queue into the mass 20 verse 20, we still kind of had a good time. But once the desire was more to level up the lightsaber guys, learn the lightsaber guys better. And then we did kind of try to grab them in the mass 20 verse 20, and that was kind of an un unpleasant way to play too, you know. Like, you're in there trying to get points to do something else to hopefully not die while you're doing it. Right, right, and I, just that asymmetrical game style where you're the saver guy and you're like running around with everybody kind of taking pot shots at you guys it's, it's, it's not amazing <laughs> it's so cool i yeah. still think it's it's just like so cool it's cool but it's not like something you always want to do or yeah I mean it's part, stressful right, it's part, stressful that's what i was yeah, saying about us trying to do it but part of what's irritating about it too is that it's just so rare like you can try to race to get that saber guy but half the games you're playing you don't have the saber guy yeah and so you know you you're just doing this thing and like sometimes you're the saber guy i don't know it's just not like the best format in my mind i don't know yeah and it the bigger problem is that we decided we wanted to learn the saber guys 
And so that was like all we wanted to kind of keep doing. But so those are our gaming updates. Now, why did we start on Borderlands? Well, being in quarantine, the idea of having to sit through those hours of videos didn't sound <laughs> as bad. And then John kept oh. telling me they made them skippable. Yeah, right. So that was so really exciting right to us. Our biggest complaint right off the bat playing Borderlands 3 was the unskippable videos, yeah. which y you can't watch those videos the first time. And then that game, you know, you go in true Vault Hunter mode, you're running through the story again. And even with the skippable videos, listening to that dialogue is maddening. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like the game, even with skippable videos, in a way is kind of painful to play through again. And then all they're asking you to do is play through the game over and over and over again. So it's it's like it's really frustrating with the with unskippable videos. It's I don't know who you know, you had to be like a crazy masochist to actually go through the game more than once. Or you and had to have just such an infinite supply of snacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. And like, you're willing to just kind of stare at, at a moving screen doing absolutely nothing for, you know, five to ten minute periods over and over yeah. at, between like a f 10 to 15 minute gameplay yeah, I think on the podcast we complained about that before, mm -hmm. like the format of Borderlands. Mm -hmm. And even with the update where you're not, where y where you can skip the videos, it's still pretty kind of long and dreadful. Just and because there are so many gameplay sequences that require multiple conversation clicks with different individuals right, right. who may or may not be distributed yeah, and that's yeah. a fact no matter how many like videos you watch or not right and i feel like if they really wanted to cater to the use case of some guy like me or like us making one of each character and playing through multiple times they really should make all that dialogue skippable too like oh yeah like how much better of a game would it be if you could just like the minute it says talk to lilith a little menu pops up you press x or something and it just skips through that part like no one wants to see like the first time you do it you know maybe you're watching the story the second time you're doing it it's just irritating, but you move on to like the third, fourth, yeah, fifth yeah. time, and each character needing two playthroughs, because when you go in true Vault Hunter mode, you have to play through the whole story again, just to open up the circles of slaughter and like that Maliwan takedown, all that stuff. So each character you make in Borderlands Three, you're you're signing up for two playthroughs of the story. Mm -hmm. So the, let's say the average hardcore player does three characters probably even four and you know the f after the third time you heard Lilith talk to you you never want to hear that again for the rest of your life but you still have to over and over and over and you know if you're if you're a guy doing four characters you're listening to those dialogues eight times which is kind of ridiculous but oh wait <laughs> I wanted to say we're getting off the rails here but real fast the the last patch introduced a ton of terrible... We're playing this game on console, I should clarify now. Uh, this footage, I also meant to clarify. What it, what mayhem is this oh. on, do you know? Um, this is Mayhem 6 out of 10 Mayhem levels. Yeah, so just... We should have said that right away. I forgot this was even going in the background. What was I trying to say? Oh, okay, so one of the terrible bugs the latest patch introduced is some kind of audio bug where both of our audio will just cut out. And when the audio is cut out and you uh, do one of those talk-tos and you can't hear it and you see how, how long it actually takes, because with no audio, it'll just be completely silent and the... Quest right, will be checked the, off. The character figures will be there, maybe gesturing. Yeah, every yeah. So few you're just seconds. sitting there, like, "What's going on? <laughs> What's happening?" And then yeah. you realize, like, "Oh, they're still talking." You just can't even hear the sound anymore, and it goes on right, for like twenty right. seconds, you, thirty it, seconds. You heavily space out. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. <laughs> okay, wait. So, our Borderlands journey. We played it when it came out. We, I don't know. We did one playthrough, got to right. true Vault we Hunter mode, and did yeah, we quit. At the first quest of true Vault Hunter mode, when like we we beat the game, like the the game where you beat the main, main boss quest, and credits yeah. roll, we went into true Vault Hunter mode, and we had to actually watch 
maybe not the entire intro video where oh like, yeah the yeah bus comes, but, but we just said we couldn't do yeah it. like a bunch of videos like at least 10 minutes of videos for your true vault hunter mode playthrough and back then it wasn't skippable and you know we could both tell that we weren't going to sit through videos for again. that long right again. right and you know, when we got it we were really excited to play it and those videos really <laughs> just <laughs> they th th yeah they took all the wind out of our sails in in terms of being excited to play this game yeah, so then this time, during quarantine, we got into it again. Videos were skippable. And also, I was thinking, maybe last time we talked about it, I was saying when we used to play through Borderlands 2. Oh, I meant to say, we've played all the Borderlands games. Borderlands yeah. 1, Even Borderlands 2. Uh, what's that the one weird called? The uh, one made by the Australian studio. Yeah, Borderlands in Space, or whatever it was called. And what the hell <laughs> was it called? And some Jack goes to space. Yeah, it's like yeah, something like that. I don't even remember what it was called. But we played through that one once, remember? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We couldn't take it anymore. So it was kind it was delightful this time around. It I really felt like we fell back in love with the game and it was so it was so refreshing compared to like trying to play Breakpoint or some of the other like sequels. Right. That I oh. did feel like over time playing it we remembered what we had because, like, when we first turned on, I was like, why the hell did we play this? We played this game so much. Like, we <laughs> played Borderlands 2. Yeah, it was yeah. one of the first co-op games we played together. Oh, so I wanted to talk about, like, what are some of those things we kind of fell back in love with about oh, it? Oh, right. Well, one first I wanted to mention a big change that happened between Borderlands 3 on release and Borderlands 3 when we picked it back up again, which, like, mid-April 2020. Mm-hmm. And release must have been around October 2019. They massively upped the amount of legendary loot you find. Just like massively. Oh, yeah. So when we f signed in recently, after we had not played however many months since release, right, like in our months. inventories, I was using like, you know, three purple guns, like one yeah, underlevel gold gun. gun. Oh, yeah. I yeah. had a blue and gun. And like on. a couple underlevel gold guns because because that was the best crap we had right, found right. during our first yeah, playthrough yeah. period and then we made new characters a couple weeks ago and so many legendaries dropped that you would pretty much go through the game only using legendaries yeah they introduced and like a diablo loot bandit what was it called oh, loot like goblin and yeah, diablo loot, loot tink or something yeah loot yeah, tink yeah. and borderlands <laughs> yeah. so you would just shoot those things and they just spew gold loot all over Right, right. But you it know that that was a smart such a smart move because it just exposed the player to so much so much more Right. So many more guns and yeah. shields and blah blah like on and on with and the possibilities and crap to yeah, think about, mods. get familiar with. Right, right. And you know, one of their initial taglines was like a billion guns and you're running you're playing through the game and you maybe find like two or three legendary guns over the course of a playthrough how it used to be mm -hmm. and you're seeing like none of the breadth of the game mm -hmm. and you know so that that was a nice thing they did i don't know when they did it or you know yeah i don't i don't even know when they did that but it was sometime while we were not playing it and you know so when we came back there was just this huge infusion of legendary garbage to find Oh, yeah. So I wanted to, can you pull up on here real fast the article? The, no, uh, what? Just the old article we wrote, things we wanted for Borderlands 3. Oh. This was one of the first articles we put on the site. It probably sucks. But that million guns thing was such bad advertising because they should have said, splash damage, <laughs> incendiary damage, crits. And then we would have remembered like the things that were actually excited, uh, exciting about the Borderlands gun. Uh-huh. Okay, okay, so let's see it. Legitimately cool storyliner characters. No. No. I, I'd, no. <laughs> yeah, I'd count that as a hard no. A hard no. I, I can't. Every time I try to even pay attention to the crap in this game, like, I can't even do it. Deeper and more meaningful classes, skill choices. See, this is what I wanted to talk about. The two biggest changes between the game, what it released, and when we started playing it now. The, go the influx of gold loot, awesome. But another oh. thing John was talking about is that you now have the ability to get the capstone 
it both trees, which or in is two in out two, of the three trees. In two out of three right. trees, which is so such a cool, exciting change for this game. Right. Well, that was another big change from when we first played, and the level cap was fifty. To now, when we picked it up two weeks ago, the level cap was fifty-seven. So, you know, we played Borderlands two after they had pushed the level cap to like seventy. Mm-hmm. So we were really playing even wi- wildly different games, even Borderlands 3 of, you know, April 2020 compared to Borderlands 3 of September 2019. Those games were much different because they had upped the level caps and you could do more with your characters. Now, I will say about that that, okay, so one of our wish list items was deeper and more meaningful class and skill choices. I'd say Borderlands 3 is maybe, it's about equivalent to Borderlands 2. Just in that in Borderlands 3, you get those automatic skills and ways to change your action skill. Whereas in Borderlands 2, they don't have that. But really, that's the only difference, I think. I, Still, I don't know. They gave, no, they gave no. more options. No, they didn't. Other than those side... Like the side yeah, the side bar. things are kind of more right. Options. The side the side things are like an extra set of options that didn't exist in Borderlands Two, but the skill trees are still essentially identical. Same amount of choices as Borderlands Two, essentially. What we're looking at a picture here, the yeah, Borderlands Two. Right. What is different here? <laughs> There's way fewer. There's maybe two icons in each. Maybe two? How could yeah. that be true, what you're saying? Well, you can't see what we're looking at. On but we're just looking We're looking at the skill trees, Borderland 2, compared to okay. Borderland 3. That's the only thing going on here. Interactive Borderlands 3. Okay, so here's Oh, my God, tree. you're totally right. Three, you're six, totally right. 8, 10, 12. So 12 skills in Borderlands 3. No, you're right. I was a fool. 2, 4, 7... 10 skills in Borderlands 2. So you have two more skills to choose from in Borderlands 3 compared to Borderlands 2, and you have those action skill modifiers. So uh, you could argue either side, I guess, that I, I don't think well, it's Well, I think much the ability to get to two capstones is But you is could a get there in Borderlands 2. Oh, okay. So no difference. All right. Right. So, I mean, in Borderlands 3, initially, it was more restrictive than the patched version of Borderlands 2. But now, I mean, now there's less skills you can use in Borderlands 3 because the level cap is still lower than it was in Borderlands 2. I see what you're saying. So, I'd say Borderlands 3, it's about equal. I don't think the skill trees are any more or less... Like deep robust and customized, yeah, robust, whatever you want to say. I, I don't think it's much of a change. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it that doesn't mean it's bad. I still think Borderlands 3 skills, at the point that it's at now, it, there's something to think about, you know, and it's still fun to think about, you know, like which two skill trees am I going to use or do some kind of hybrid build or something like that, so... You know, it's it's not bad, but it's about... I'd say it's about equivalent to Borderlands 2. Like, you can get as deep into figuring out a cool Borderlands 2 build as you can a Borderlands 3 build. But okay, one more thing is Borderlands 3 has those anointments. I don't think there was anything like that in Borderlands 2. Was there? I guess I don't remember, but right. I don't think so. So explain what those are real fast. It's um, the anointments are it's unique like modifiers to items yeah. that affect class skills. So, you know, you can see, assuming there's, I'm not remembering wrong, and there were anointments in Borderlands 2, which I guess I don't think there were, you can see that there's, like, more customization in Borderlands 3. Available, because yeah. uh, the anointments you get, really affect what affect you depending on what build you're using. Now, what's bad about the anointment system in Borderlands 3 is that if you have a gun that relies on a certain anointment for your build, then the chances of you rolling that gun are like zero. Like say you need a specific anointment on a specific gun, 
you'd really have to just farm borderlands. Like you'd have to be incredibly lucky or farm it for a long time to, you know, to have a hope of getting that gun in that with that anointment. So I don't know, it's kind of a restrictive, irritating thing where, you know, you could probably play this game for months and never find the specific gun with the specific anointment you want. And you know, maybe that's what trading is for or you know, you could go online and ask if anyone has like a OPQ system gun with 200% weapon damage while action skill is active, for instance. Yeah, but uh, circling back, one of the bigger things we wanted to talk about here and uh, a kind of, well, I don't know if it was a reason we loved the game, but a thing that would always get us into the game is how different the game becomes as soon as the difficulty is turned up. And really until we were able to turn up the mayhem difficulty or something on this game. Like, it just wasn't that interesting to play. Oh, I was trying right. to say that you're talking about farming, like, the gun you need with the specific anointment that's, like, going to make your build however many percentage-wise better is all well and good when you're trying to compete, like, up here at Mayhem 6 or whatever. But as long as you're down below that, the anointment is just, like, a nice bonus. And Right, right. But, I mean, that speaks to another kind of strange problem with Borderlands where the game difficulty is so binary. Like you're low when you're yeah. a low level guy, just, just everything use, melts. Right. Use whatever you want. Yeah. Melt everything. Your anointment doesn't matter. But then you raise your skills, the mayhem. Your skills and build don't <laughs> right, it all kind of right, works yeah, well yeah. enough. Then like you as pick. you as you edge the difficulty up more and more things become unviable. It becomes a completely different game. Right, right. To the point that, you know, with a bad build, and, you know, Mayhem 6 isn't that high, but it's fairly high, because up until when we played the game, there was Mayhem 3. They made Mayhem 4, and our guys were melting Mayhem 4, Yeah, essentially. So yeah. we bumped it to Mayhem 6. It became very hard on our guys. And this footage that you're seeing is before we got a certain relic. Oh, yeah. That increases your damage essentially 90% multiplicatively, which means now that we got that relic, we got that specific relic. Now, you know, when we were playing yesterday, this same Mayhem 6 content was essentially melting. So it's like you build your guy up until you get to this one difficulty gate, you begin melting it, and then the game asks you to, like, up the difficulty again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I but guess... But you were saying that was a bad thing, but I think that's one of the fun and intriguing things about the game. Right. It, and that's what, like, pulled <laughs> us in more this time. Playing that's it. right, but the thing is that as you go higher and higher, more and more of like the skills and weapons in the game become completely useless, just completely useless. You you know, you go into Mayhem 6 and you have a certain submachine gun for instance and it just it doesn't even move their health, you know. So like as you move up, fewer and fewer things become useful to you, which I don't know, you could say that's good or bad, I guess. Well, I think that's what's keeping us interested, though. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I well, guess Well, what so. are some of the other things about the game you think you, like, fell back in love with again or you were enjoying uh, about well, it? Well, I, I mean, par it's all related where I was really delighted to that there were more legendary drops. So by doing that, I mean, it's just kind of like a different kind of gambling, right? Where mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. before they increased the amount of legendaries that dropped, it was like being on a tough slot machine where nothing mm -hmm. came out. And then they changed it to be like kind of an interesting slot machine where you kill the monster, you kill the boss, and then a bunch of uniques fly out and you get to like look at what the game has rolled for you. So, you know, these changes they made recently, they made it a lot more like mass gambling or like, you know, those <laughs> guys with the phone, the phone game where you're going to press a button a thousand times. OK, and so like John loves the higher instances of better gambling. Right. They, sure, okay. they, they <laughs> okay. really they up the like gambling pleasure quotient which, of the game. True right, enough. Right. Yeah. And like every loot game is kind of like gambling related. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, what else? 
Um, I, I guess what's kind of a cool thing about it is that, you know, one thing that we tried to play Destiny 2 again a couple months ago or three months ago or something, and maybe this changes in Destiny 2, but I feel like in Destiny 2, you're always playing the same way. Whereas in Borderlands, depending on what skill or what class you've picked and then what skill trees you go down, the gameplay is wildly different. Like I was playing. It's definitely true. Right, right. Oh. I was playing Moe's and you can make a build where like all you do is shoot grenades and, and homing rockets and you never have to aim at the enemy. Or you could play like a sniper guy or, you know, I've been playing Zane the operative and you can you can make a build where you know you you're really effective with automatic guns or you can make like a digi clone spamming build you can you know like just depending on what class you do just the play style and how you approach the game is going to be wildly different and I, I guess thinking about it what what is irritating is that as the game difficulty goes up fewer of those play styles become possible so like part of my mind goes to like, well, is that, it's like pointless that you can play a Moe's grenade build and it's like really fun and cool for the majority of the game. But I guarantee you that one on Mayhem 6, you're, you know, you're not really going to be playing that way anymore. You you're don't think your Moe's grenade thing would work on Mayhem 6? Well, it will, but only because that, so with the Moe's grenade build, early on, I went through just kind of like grenade spamming the whole map and like it would it would work but as i played and as we got into mayhem 4 that the possibility of playing that way it really dropped to the point that at that point you're just using guns that work well with the skills you've got that buff your damage as most so you know like as the difficulty ramps up I feel like the play styles become a little more uniform than they were in the past or like a past part of the game. Do you have another example of something in the time we're playing that like we did in the first playthrough that would be completely untenable in this? Main well, six? So yeah, I mean, like when you change your flak to the green and blue build. Oh, and yeah, yeah. It it was really weak and, yeah, I and like you didn't yeah. you didn't quite have a great build for that play mm -hmm. style and and you need to know like what guns work well mm -hmm. but i legitimately feel like as you get bigger in borderlands it's really just about like the automatic weapon fire rate crits mm -hmm. and so like mm -hmm. every that's like how you you like juice the game math to work for you and so like you know, in I'm I can guarantee you that there's like no one running through Mayhem Ten slamming grenades with Moe's. Okay. You know, like yeah, there's yeah. just no way. And anyone who's like running Mayhem Ten with Moe's, they like know what gun works really well with like the Mind Seeker mod and and what it, like short fuse the capstone. So, you know, I I it's cool that the the game mode or like there's so many play styles but i also feel like th they become uniform as you move forward but i don't know it's possible there's like more that i don't know about and and i've only played two of the characters but you know at this point both my mo's and my zane are just like firing high fire rate automatic weapons and aiming for the head like that's what they're doing why did you think, uh, this is just going off tangent more, but remembering the way the Destiny trees, why did you think that Borderlands offered more? Okay, so... Okay, like, I remember Destiny, first time we tried to play, I was, like, the shield guy, had my, like, crap shield titan or something. Right, but, okay, think of how much that shield did for you in Destiny 2, like, nothing. Like, you could have played without it, right? Well, yeah, but I think you could change the shield to something and also, like... Right, but I mean the the biggest difference right off the bat, given that I haven't played much of Destiny Two, but you can really see that Borderlands the skills do a lot more to like the gun mechanics. The skills oh. play into the guns. I see. You maybe in Destiny they do a little bit now too, but in Destiny Two there were like 
three mods. You can you can like change your main mm -hmm. skill a little bit. You can change your jump. You can change your grenade, mm -hmm. and then like maybe you, maybe the guns are fun to farm and try or something. But in Borderlands, there's like each guy has at least ten or twelve skills that affect his gunplay. And so the gunplay and how like your skills affect with the guns or your skills affect the guns in Borderlands is really important. Yeah, it's like so an interesting relationship. Right, going on right. There. And and I feel like the skills in Borderlands are more impactful, which kind of makes the skill trees more important and there's like more to affect. But yeah, I don't know. Like we didn't play much of Destiny Two, but I feel like Destiny 2, what you were always just shooting, right? And oh, then yeah, yeah. In Borderlands, like, as it gets harder, it becomes more Destiny-like, where the good skills are going to be the ones that help you shoot, f like, better, faster, mm -hmm. and harder. So, I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I wanted to say another thing. Once we're on this, like, high mayhem level, I appreciate about the game. Again, maybe nobody cares except, like, girls or me. But the trash in this game lovable when you're when you first start playing they all just melt and you don't really notice them but then once it's incredibly difficult and like uh, the little animal or whatever i don't know they all have funny names i wanted to write down i i enjoy it i enjoy shooting them thinking about them the like the lunatics with their like huge tubular arms that kind of come oh wailing yeah, off yeah. of you <laughs> i'm saying this because destiny man you got like a robot eyeball in the sky like a fat robot yeah, on the ground. Yeah. All the, you know, a menacing <laughs> robot <laughs> yeah. behind the corner. Yeah, but there's like so much of Destiny that we really never even Oh, yeah, I know, I know. But, but I mean, the run-of-the-mill enemy in Destiny was like some of my least favorite kind of enemies. Right, right, yeah. The Borderlands enemies kind of remind me of the remnant from the Ashes enemies. They're like, I like them in the same way where they all kind of have a look about them or like a little like a funny name or identifier or something. Uh huh. Uh huh. I don't know. That's to me one of the lovable things about the game, and one of the things that I started to love again when those particular enemies kind of became tough as nails to take down. Yeah, yeah. So right, I mean, you're right. Where I guess that's kind of an issue with early Borderlands too, where. The enemies melt so fast that you never you have to look at them. them. But when the oh, game and that's another thing that makes it feel like all you're doing is you're in videos because as, as the difficulty goes up, the time it takes you to complete the same com combat right. also it, goes up. It goes up wildly. Yeah. Like oh, like one instance is in our first playthrough with Moe's and Flack. I think you were playing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this area where you're talking to the Balex little teddy bear robot and you're trying to kill Genevieve the boss and then one of the events the scripting gets messed up because you if you kill the enemies too fast essentially the scripting stops and that bear will just sit there forever so you have to quit the game reload and then hopefully like the game will bypass it so you know we were killing the monsters in that part just like way faster than than they ever expected so that it was like not coded properly mm -hmm. for someone who's killing like all three waves of enemies in 10 seconds or whatever and you know, we weren't like smart power users but you know, just playing the game you melt those things yeah. especially early on and then in the last playthrough where i think this was just last night we were on mayhem six we didn't really have our gun upgrades and we we decided to kind of like try to kill those monsters slower, but our guys were killing the monsters so much slower in anyway on mm -hmm. Mayhem Six that there was really like no chance that the scripting that could right the scripting up. could get messed up because it was like more in line with what they expected. But you know that I, that's like a strong argument for making the game get some kind of standardized difficulty. Or mm -hmm. remember we were looking at those patch notes earlier today, and it said like they adjusted the levels of some monsters because players were going in over leveled. So it's like they ev they even know about that problem where the game is like super easy, or it's super hard, and it's like you know <laughs> maybe someday they'll have like a better way for that or something. 
Well, I don't know. Just that. Th- but the ge- anyway, when the game is actually hard and it takes you like 15 to 20 seconds to kill a monster, you get a great look at it. And that's like. Yeah, you get a great look right, at it. That's right. all I was trying yeah, to say. Yeah. And it's they're nice to look at at the end of the day. They are. So when you turn on this game for the first time, you can't just select a mayhem mayhem mode difficulty, right? No, no y- yeah. Right. I mean, that's yeah, part yeah. of it because mm-hmm. most games you just turn it on, you just smash like right, a right. tough ass extra hard. Yeah, like you I'm get a roasted. son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Uh, I don't know. That's one thing. Uh, that's one thing about it, but right. And you know they they have to cater to so many different types of players too. So you know. Oh, yeah, so I remembered another thing I wanted to mention, just in retrospect. The f- we played through right when it came out. I wanted to get in on the hype. Everybody was talking about it. And then I was saying, in the past when we played Borderlands 2, we would pad the boringness of m- the main quest or the true Vault Hunter playthrough by doing the arenas and stuff. So now that it's been out for a long time, all that information is really available online. Oh, right. At the time, right. it was like, I was saying, like, where was that crap? It's like, well, we were too lazy to find it. We didn't uh-huh. look it up, and it hadn't been, like, universally discovered yet. So now it has been, and there's these three DLCs and, I don't know, s- events there's and stuff right, going there's on. There's occasional events, and, and what's big is they have areas in the game that tell you about those things, you know? Like, remember we... Oh, yeah. We went on the social screen or somewhere, and they showed all the different circles of slaughter for you. Mm-hmm. And so that was like a big issue when when we first got the game. It's just so we were much like, what else is there to do? Right, we're we just gonna play yeah, yeah. play through again. Uh-huh. And like right, so they've done a pretty good job, like just expanding what the UI displays. Yeah, yeah, right. and but. S- so bigger picture now, if you're thinking of playing through again, you won't just strictly be doing main quests uh, over and over again. There's right, kind of right. plenty and of other Yeah, the DLCs are... I mean, there's still really long talk to these at the beginning of the yeah, DLCs, yeah. which is kind of irritating, but the DLCs are kind of cool. There's two of them now. Uh, we, we bought the season pass. So I think that means there's supposed to be two more, like, oh, full wow. DLCs promised. And, you know, we've only been playing for, like, three weeks or a month now, and there was some event. Maybe it's there's, like, the loot explosion mm-hmm. event, and there's another mini event going for this, like, cartel, like, kill the cartel or some crap like that. Oh, and that the part of the new mini or part of the new mini event is like a new cartel map. Remember, we like mm-hmm. spent a night doing that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's kind so of there's a lot lots to of do. Cool yeah, yeah. Stuff to see right, uh, right. Since when it came out, if you like us, just like uh, did a playthrough and turned it off or something. Right, and and just at a basic level, the uh, the characters are a lot more interesting at level fifty-seven, where you know you you have more build options, which is kind of, like, cool or fun. or It's a nice aspect of the game, I guess. What else do you want to say about Borderlands? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know if we... I It's still kind of hard to... I, I'm surprised that we ended up really enjoying the game again <laughs> for whatever reason. I don't know why. Right. Like I thought I, yeah, I mean, I guess part of me thought I would hate it again, but... I I've been enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You got anything else you want to say about it? Uh, not really. Oh, so I, I wanted to talk about just real fast our favorite guns, and it was funny scrolling through the patch notes. We kind of tried to look at a lot of them today since release, and a lot of the guns that we had identified as like, oh wow, this is cool. They'd kind of been like buffed or something, like the lob, which I think. You've right. probably seen They're over and over again yeah, in this video. On this video, like I also, you'll notice for like the first part of this fight, I was shooting the lob at those crystals and doing nothing, and it wasn't for oh. like <laughs> ten minutes till I figured that out or something. Favorite but guns? Okay, so one of them that just came out of this event, no pew pew, was that an event right, gun? I believe so. That thing is a beast. Right. I was so shocked because it was this awesome gun we found, and I Googled it, and there was, like, nobody talking about it. And then shortly after, I found out it was, like, an event gun because, you know, you would talk about this gun if it was in the game. So, like, I feel like they added it recently. New gun, 
keep an eye out for it. I don't know, sign in during the event and get it. I, I guess maybe it won't be available anymore. It's just, R- that right, thing is right. a beast. Just sprays <laughs> uh, unholy yeah, on yeah. bullets. And then, uh, rips a guy yeah. down. I like this gun called OPQ system. Oh, yeah, that's another good one. Yeah, I'll... That's another assault rifle. Is They're that the both one that full makes the little floating guns? Yeah, 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 but that's not the best part of it. The best part is just that it does a ton of damage, mm-hmm. and it, like, aims nicely. I don't know. That's a good one to look out for. What was the other one? I got one. Oh, man, I got one that was lighting me on fire, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, my guy's just dying. The sound, we, the sound was all messed up, so we had that, like, sound bug. So it was, like, quiet when we were playing, and then I would hear, like, <laughs> like these <laughs> static noises and I would die because the gun was lighting me on fire. I was an idiot. I didn't notice. <laughs> uh, other guns, pistols, what else? Uh, what um, else Bob is, cool. is a shotgun yeah. making those huge orbs. I think you can right, put different right. elements on it maybe. The conference call kind of sucks. It's like one of those guns. Like yeah, either. it's it like it it empties its clip too fast. Oh, there's all these guns that on Moe's, there's this end bottomless mags tree. So it makes all these guns that you would never use kind of viable, like Krakatoa, just like if you can assign infinite ammo to a gun. And there were like a few others that I was using as Moe's too that I probably wouldn't have liked. Oh, even the no pew pew, it just burns through ammo. So it's a lot better on Moe's where you actually don't have to worry about running your guy out of ammo halfway through like the stupid, uh, whatchamacallit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like through like a run of battle or whatever. And mm-hmm. and, and like the Each ammo. Each guy has yeah. kind of different guns that are right, more right, or less yeah, compatible yeah. with them. And right. And based then on their oh skills, like yeah, you Yeah, there's saying. a whole guardian thing too, like the, oh guardian, yeah, the guardian ranks. Points. We didn't talk about that, but. That's a cool aspect. It makes the like, uh, it makes leveling up at max level kind of like possible and interesting. And so explain what they are real fast. Oh, so they just as you play, once you get a guy to, I guess it's true vault hunter mode. It opens up and it's like an account level leveling or account level experience bar, uh-huh. and then. This w- in Borderlands 2, it, they had a really similar thing called badass ranks. Oh, yeah. But in Borderlands 3, it's guardian ranks. So then, you know, you gain experience, you choose a point, e- and then they have, like, special skills based on the points you choose. So I don't know, not too, not too much to say about it other than that that's like a... It's like recording the time you put into the game and giving you some credit for right, it, even if right. your guys yeah, are at max yeah, level. So it's kind of like a yeah, cool feature. Yeah. Uh-huh. Although I feel like most games now have something, something like, like that. that yeah. sure. Even like, oh, well, Battlefront 2, remember, they had the, uh, you know, when we quit, we still weren't done leveling all the classes mm-hmm. and guys. But they had what I thought was something like that where you had like a level, but it actually capped at 50. So Battlefront 2 actually does not have a truly equivalent system. Yes, but... Well, yes, but in the original version of the game, they would have been giving you, like, you, you still would have been earning those credits and buying loot boxes with them. But uh, oh if right. everything was leveled up, I don't know what exactly you'd be going for in the loot box. But but the rare star cards were still only found in the loot boxes. So ostensibly, you'd well, sit there going, like, hopefully right, I'll get a gold card for my guy. Right, there still wouldn't be, like, a persistent experience bar, though. Correct, yeah. No, uh, that's so true. I'm not right, disagreeing right. with that. I'm just saying you would have got something, whereas at this point there was like actually nothing. Right, like for as much as we earned in Battlefront Two, I, I guess one last frontier would have been leveling up each lightsaber guy, mm-hmm. which might have been cool if there were like more lightsaber modes. Or I mean, we talked yeah, earlier yeah, we about talked like about this that. problem or issue or whatever you want to call it. Oh, so then one more thing I just wanted to talk about real fast was classes here. So I, w- I had a FLK and a Amara. John had a Mosey and a, a Zane. A Zane. So impressions of them among my two guys, I s- I d- I still preferred FLK at these. I don't know. We need to turn up the mayhem level and see how far he could go. But with a, he just rips enemies down he just tears them to shreds and then 
Amara, we could try I could try a melee build of her at these higher mayhem levels, but I'm not right. exactly like hopeful about how that would go. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, think we, that would yeah, go well. <laughs> we could but look on YouTube and see if there's someone out there just <laughs> I don't know, kicking ass doing that. But Amara the way if you've seen in the video I have that phase grasp thing that kind of grasps all the enemies. So I feel like she kills them slow, but she do, she does some crowd control, so it's safe and okay for her to kill them slower than like my FLK would. Uh, yeah, but it's so hard for you to actually know how fast you have to compare yeah. them at the same one to one. That's level, what I'm right? saying. I, and, and we've yeah. only played the f- FL 4K them. at Mayhem Four. Like yeah. we we bumped it up to Mayhem Four. They could still do it, but then we bumped our Zane and Amara up to Mayhem Six. From Mayhem 4, which they could also easily do. Right, I agree. But so favorite, I'm just trying to say, like, favorite here, I don't know, because in general, I like, playing with the pet is just, like, less uh, action and experience for you to have as a player, because there's just a kind of NPC out there doing right, damage right. for you and eliminating <laughs> crap. Uh-huh. Right, I mean, but that's another thing where, like, that pet, that is so powerful in the early stage of the game. That pet in Mayhem 10 is probably yeah, he might have been useless. He might have been roadkill, yeah, like yeah, needing yeah, to right, be resed right. all the time or something. Yeah. But we need to get them up there, uh, get some videos, see if they could even do it. But what about your guys? Oh, I wanted you to talk talk about Zane a little bit. Um, when well the game first came out, everyone said Zane was trash. Yeah, so the first time... I played Zane. He, I did like a green and light. Which one was it? Lightly into red. It was only like level thirty-five. My primary skill was barrier. It wasn't very good. That's it, like it a kept big you shield. safe. Yeah, it's a big shield. Uh, so now I've played Zane at Mayhem Six as a. Uh, a red and blue. So blue is the uh, the drone thing you get, but mostly what blue's filled with is kill skills. Uh, both builds only work with a specific com, which lets you trigger your kill skills on uh, like on on shot rather than on kill, and it increases the effectiveness of your kill skills, which is a big buff to that guy. So I tried. A blue and red and a blue and green. So blue and red is the drone and the clone. Uh, it's pretty good. The digi clone is strong. The blue and green build. Your gunplay was a lot better because you typic green is the only skill tree in Zane's three out of out of Zane's three skill trees. Green is the only one that has a really powerful weapon handling buff which greatly increases your ability to get headshots on the enemies. So I'd say at Mayhem 6 that both Zane builds are about equally effective, where the barrier one might have actually been more effective because I was just getting lots of headshot kills very easily. Uh, They both need that life drain. You're just doing a build video here. Well, <laughs> I, I'm <laughs> I'm just yeah, saying know, that they both worked, and they both worked fairly well at Mayhem 6 with, like, the build and gear I had. Mm-hmm. They both worked about equally well, whereas where the red one was funner, the green one was maybe more effective and you died less. But they were about equally effective, so I don't know, they're... Yeah, we need to get some right, stuff on the website with the different builds we've kind of r- played with. Right. And I mean, maybe part of it is just like when I can see that both builds work quite well or well enough, I get like a little less interested where in my mind, like, okay, they both work. End of story, right? Mm-hmm. Like that, like they both work well enough. And like, that's about all I think about it. But which was your favorite between Moe's and... Zane. Oh, well... You need to test Moe's well, a little Moe's more. Oh, Moe's had a bunch of changes, too, I meant to say. The oh, latest right, patch. they recently buffed Moe's. And then when I looked back through the other patches, it was like Moe's had continued right. receiving small changes kind of since right. the game I mean, started. I, I suppose that 
Well, we need to test Mose at Mayhem 6 or N above. But Mose's bottomless mags tree is essentially infinite ammo, which I really enjoyed more than you can know. Y- well, so in this right game, it's I just it's more DPS like we were talking about. You're, you're shooting more. Right. Well, I mean, most guns that do good DPS are high fire rate automatic guns, which means if you are playing and you're using that as your primary gun, you're probably going to run out of ammo. Mm -hmm. So on Moe's, it was just ridiculous and fun to just not have to run out of ammo, meaning you can use, like, whatever gun you want. You can only use one gun. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed that aspect of Moe's, which... wouldn't. Right, (laughs) right, which, like, it doesn't actually suggest very much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it is... Like, uh, one of the more powerful things in the game. Oh, yeah, and then Amara, I respect out of it, but she had just, like, an automatic res, which was also just, like, a stupid, powerful thing, where, it, like, she entered fight for her life. Right, and got an instant second <laughs> win, which, which I never thought win. that would help you too much at higher levels, uh. because usually what what will get you is, like, when you're gotten by something at the high mayhem levels you'll typically kind of die over and over, meaning just one sec- one extra second win doesn't help you. And your ability to survive that piece of content in Borderlands usually has as much or more to do with whether there's a trash mob to get second wind off of or not. So oh I, yeah, didn't, I, g- I didn't I gotcha. think, like given all that, I didn't think Amara's second oh wind yeah, skill would continue to be good nice. because, you know, there'd be like an anointed monster that, is just one shotting you over and over. It's still ridiculous. It's like an instant <laughs> res. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> right. Oh, I wanted to say if you're I don't know who would be listening to this, people who've played Borderlands, didn't play the new one, already played the new one, turned it off already because you've already played the new one on every single character and done every <laughs> piece of content. But things you oh, you also notice you notice more about the game <laughs> when you're playing at the higher mayhem level. So newbie tip, if you're like me and you didn't notice, it seems to me that on all these creatures, the kind of neon neon portion of them is usually their critty spot, the neon majority. Right. I'm look, I watching the spider right now, and I'm not sure I could even like see that too well. But right, but, but I, I, sh- <laughs> I certainly did not notice that on my first playthrough because it was like you just shoot them and they melt anyway. Yes, but I was going to say that I began to think that it was anointed monsters that got those crit points. Like oh, I they started to had the neon like right. Parts I started of their to notice stuff. that it seemed like only those anointed guys would get those crit spots you were referring to. I don't know because even I think this is playing again. But yeah, even it's at this, it's at this fight right at the now. end of that, that guy's wearing like that cape. He was like a floating ghostone wearing like a cape, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, the neon part of the, the flaps of the inside of his cape was like his critty spot. Oh, well, yeah, maybe. I mean, there's... Anyway, I I was trying to think there were, like, a couple other things I would have told myself first time I played through, but I guess I can't quite remember. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing this game, though, you really just need to bypass the trashy early parts and get to the mayhem. Like, that's That's ultimately what would be, like, my recommendation for this game. That's what we needed to be told, too. Right, but, I mean, you know, when we... When we were playing at release, you still would to play at Mayhem. You still you wouldn't still need to watch all the videos. And yeah, all absolutely. That crap. Yeah, absolutely. so, so it is a better game now than it was back then. And and you could also see in all those patch notes that they keep making kind of like bug fixes and quality of life improvements. So trying to, because yeah. that last patch they had so many bug right. fixes and <laughs> quality of life improvements, right, and it really messed up. We started blue screening just like. Three times a night, where before we had right. rarely blue screen, yeah, they yeah. introduced a uh-huh. ton more bugs. The audio just pretty much cuts off. I mean, this is right. on PlayStation. Maybe it's not so bad on computer. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's a big patch, so mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wanted to, we forgot to talk about console versus computer, because everybody loves to, but I just wanted to say the reason we always played console because you could snuggle on the couch. <laughs> this is like office working position. It's a different mindset. 
I wanted to say I feel like people are way more likely to be using cannabis than playing PlayStation on console. On oh, right, couch right. Than a person playing computer. But I could be wrong about that. Maybe there's guys. I mean, there's all kinds of guys. Yeah, but. <laughs> 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 yeah. But. So, uh, oh, and I wanted to say we're going to play Baldur's Gate. All <laughs> oh right, we're playing Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition. Why? We just made why new guys. Why did we want to do that? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> I remember it from a kid, being a kid, I think my brother played it, and he would let me do dialogue selections from time <laughs> to time. Oh, we wanted to play a game like Divinity. Uh, maybe that was why, too. Oh, yeah. Well, it's like a progenitor to Divinity. Yeah, yeah. Is how I'd call that, I guess. So, oh, and then we were going to, we had so much more content about Star Wars Battlefront 2 that we were going to get up on the site. And now, I don't know if we said this in the beginning, but they're done with the game. It's over. It's going to. Oh, right. They made like a content release. Or yeah. Maybe it's going to release soon. But anyway, they said it's like going to be the last content update for Battlefront 2. So, I, uh, I, so don't, know. I don't know <laughs> if we'll finish those now kind of useless gameplay or strategy articles and get them on the site but maybe we will so check it out if you do oh i wanted to say like <laughs> i was thinking battlefront 3 like would i buy it heck no it will be really curious to see what ea does right when they release the next one is it going to be like a free game will they try to do like a lighter version of letting you like spend money on all the crap in the game like a lighter less offensive version will there be a battlefront 3 are they just going to abandon the ip uh, well it'll they, all be interesting they see. said there's a new one set to release in 2021 oh they did they announced yeah. it i didn't realize yeah. that yeah but i thought like heck no i'm not going to buy that at launch <laughs> I, I don't know yeah it's g- get in touch uh let us know what games you've been playing. Yeah, and, and there's a whole world of, like, uh, now that we have these gaming computers, you know, we could, like, stream to a TV. Mm-hmm. We have to try out, like, putting a controller on a computer, which yeah. is, like, still a new frontier to us. I- and, you know, if you have listened to us talk before, we've talked about using, like, an Xbox controller on PlayStation. So... You know, we're going to have to try those Xbox controllers on the computer. And there's, like, the whole world of Xbox games on PC that we've never quite... Oh, yeah. We wanted we to play that other Epic game. Yeah, like, Gears of War is, like, supposedly a big co-op one that we don't know anything about. But we could possibly try it now. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> exciting, exciting gaming times are in store for us if yeah uh, for us at least <laughs> if uh the world keeps ticking yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i assume it's going to or else i don't know what i would be doing that's right but yeah i mean that's what everybody's probably assuming now yeah maybe other than bill gates but well we yeah. hope you're doing well out there if you listen to this all the way through Thanks. That's awesome. Uh, let us know. Shoot us an email or a comment. Somebody wrote in to us. Shout out Shout out to them. That was awesome and yeah. inspired us yeah, to uh, keep going. Right, yeah, this. that that person said they play co-op on computer, too. Yeah. And yeah, so pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. See you later. Yep. Bye. Bye. <laughs>